Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, this teaching, we are continuing uh, in the, th the theme of Freedom Day. And uh, we are busy with the Noah series. And today we are focusing on Genesis 9. And Noah and the family and the animals have been cooped up like we were during the pandemic. We were cooped up in our homes. So they were cooped up in the ark for one full year and now they are stepping out just like we did we are in the days of noah the last days before the coming of our lord and savior jesus christ in the clouds in the flesh on his white horse and his name written on his style faithful and true revelation 19 verse 11. so we are starting with, uh, so they are stepping out of the ark. Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and he took and he made burnt offerings of every clean beast, every clean fowl. That's why, that's why the difference of the clean, that's why the Bible mentions clean. Lord only wants clean sacrifices. And the Lord smelt, verse 21. Um, chapter 8 verse 21 and the Lord smelled a sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart I will not again curse the ground anymore anymore for man's sake for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth continually neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done while the earth remaineth sea time and harvest and cold and heat, and the summer and winter, and the day and night shall not cease. Now this is the post-ark stepping out. Noah steps out into a world he does not recognize anymore. The earth has been through a cataclysm, and the earth has been radically transformed and changed. Everything changes from the sky, the seasons, the look of everything. Everything is different from henceforth till today. Until Jesus comes, he's going to change it again. Okay, so now we are in chapter 9. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So out of the eight, they are, out of four couples, they are going to replenish the earth with the animals. There's nothing left. It's only them that was on the ark. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Are they delivered? Now what this is saying in verse 3 is that before this, the animals were friendly. They were herbivores. They didn't, they, uh, the, the, the interaction between man and the animals were very different. So from this moment, the Lord said to him, now the animals will be afraid of man. There was, there's the difference. This is a curse. This is the curse. This is what man has brought upon the earth. There's no such thing as natural causes and nature. All this, you, all this doctrines of men devil's doctrines and all this and um, Darwin's theory it is bull it is trying to turn you away from the Lord it is doctrines of men so it says here that um, the dread the fear of, of, of you and the dread of you shall be upon every animal every every animal fowl beast everything and verse 3 every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you even as the green herb have I given you all things. Herbivores, meat now, man shall eat meat. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. What is that saying? That before this moment, before verse 3, before they stepped out, they were eating greens. Man did not eat meat. 4. Speaks of vampirism cannibalism listen carefully but flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof shall not shall he not eat and surely your blood of your lives will i require at the hand of every beast will i require it 
And at the end of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. Now I'm going to read you the English Standard Version to make you understand. But you shall not eat the flesh with its life, that it's that is its blood, and for your life blood will I require reckoning. For every beast I will require it, and from man, from his fellow man, will I require a reckoning for the life of man. Whosoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed, and for, for God made man in his own image, and you shall be fruitful. Sorry. End there. So what that is saying is, um, man is not allowed to eat another man's flesh and drink another man's blood as sustenance. That is today's occultism of vampirism and all that. Uh, so it's satanic rituals. That's what that verse is actually saying. Hallelujah. That, you know, today that is evil and, and that is pure evil because in the previous chapters it said that the sons of men, the, the fallen angels, are mated with the daughters of men, and out came this Nephilim, this giants, right? And this giants ate men's flesh. I'll get into that in a later stage in Jasher. I think it was Jasher in the Apocrypha. It speaks intense, immensely on that topic. That's why God, that is the evil in mankind, evil on upon the earth. That's why God had to abolish that. Because that is not what man was intended to do. That was on man's own doing and that is sin from the garden of Adam and Eve. That is what, what that, the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what man introduced to us. So today we say it's man's fault. It's, it, 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 it is sin's fault. God doesn't hate man. He hates sin. That's his enemy. That's his main enemy. His main, main enemy. Okay, let's move. Time. Uh, I just want to go fast forward. So, now from this moment, God says that he will, the blood sacrifices is for him. As a burnt offering for the Lord. That's why he says, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor, a flavor. Okay. So now it says here, verse 11. And I will establish a covenant with you. Neither shall you, neither sh neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more, be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, "This is a token of a covenant. This is a promise no, that God made, which I make between you, between me, and you, and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set." Verse 13, I do set a bow in the cloud and it shall be a token for our covenant, for a covenant between me and the earth. It's a reminder when you see a bow in the cloud, one bow, one rainbow in the cloud. And we as South Africans, we have that slogan that we are the rainbow nation. We are many, many colors from white, from black to white. Across the spectrum, all different colors, nations, as South Africa was a trading post in the last thousand years. South Africa was a trading post between, um, across the globe. You had to pass through, and Cape Town was a refreshment station, a refueling station. So what is this saying, right? That um, today the there's a lot of, um, I don't know, they call it harp, they call it all kinds.